these are some of the materials you're going to need to do your fiberglass project. You can buy the fiberglass mix that comes with the hardener and the little top that you can use for mixing at a discount store or your automotive center. Also you can buy the, uh, I like the kitty hair type cloth and you're going to need a pair of scissors for cutting the cloth. Plus you're going to need some brushes that you can get somewhere at a, you know, it's a store, discount store somewhere and you're going to need something to mix it with. Here's a stir to kind of mix it with. And if it's during the winter time or it's cold, you can use a heat lamp to warm it up. And keep an eye on it because it will make it dry rapid. You need safety glasses and you need a dust mask to keep all the particles and stuff out of your eyes and out of your lungs. First thing you need to do is get your grinder out and grind back all the paint in the area where it's cracked at. Now this white stuff here that you'll run into below the car color is gel coat. It's something that comes from the factory when they make these fiberglass parts. You need to grind all that back. It needs to go all the way back to this kind of creamy looking color. Make sure to grind it far enough back, at least an inch or so, away from the crack. And you also got to V-groove it. You kind of grind down the edge here. Where it kind of goes in on both sides to give enough room for your fiberglass to fall in this crack and hold. It's got to be ground down kind of thin in here in places. Kind of V-groove it. You may even run into some places where it's been bondoed before. This little spot right here has been bondoed. Now some of that's got to come out because it's too close to my crack. But back over here, I you can probably leave it alone. But all this has got to be ground back, all that Bondo. As you're grinding, you may run across more cracks that were under the paint that didn't show real well. And then that's when you need to V-grind it too. Grind it on back into a V-shape. Kind of grind on this side, grind down on that side to lower it where the crack is to give enough room for your fiberglass rosin to fit in there. Once you've ground over it and you feel like you found all the, your cracks and stuff, you may want to go back over it and kind of bring the paint a little further back. You need a couple inches around the crack. It needs to be clean. Clean back from any kind of Bondo or any kind of paint or primer or any kind of gel coat, that white stuff. got to make sure you grind it down low enough in the cracks to where when you fill in your rosin and your cloth it won't be too high when you finish it off level. So you got to grind deep into the crack and dig a lot of that out with the grinder.
I'm still finding some cracks that I thought was just the paint crack. But when I grind down, I find out it did get into the fiberglass. And then you got to grind it back. Here's a crack running right through here. I got to grind it back at least two inches. Here's another crack I'm seeing right here. So I'm going to end up having to just go ahead and grind all of this out to see if there's any more cracks. Now you got to remember, if you're cracked up here on top, you may be cracked underneath too, and that has to be ground and repaired also. Sometimes you may want to go back and re-grind where you've already been. Make sure it's ground down low enough into the crack to where you can fill it back in. Once you've got it all ground back a good ways on each side of the crack, then you need to check it and see if it's off. Because sometimes when they're hit, they can drop down or something get twisted. And you can pull it back and fiberglass it back where it goes, where it belongs. In this case, this piece here was a little lower than this side. So I used a screwdriver to push it back up off the ground. But then you also need to measure and make sure you're at the right distance here. So this height here will work just where I need it. It's not too high, not too low. Now it's time to cut your cloth ready for your job. You should cut it at least two inches wide in strips. Now like I said, I like to use this kitty hair because this kitty hair type, you can move it around and bend it around stuff easy. It just has a stronger holding. Now you're going to need some short ones and some long ones, but once you cut it in strips, you may want to cut them all about three inches long. It needs several of them because you got all of that area down there to do. But I'd rather cut them two inches by three inches and have several of them where you can make them fit into places. Go ahead and cut enough to do all your cracks. Kind of estimate how much you're going to need. You may have to cut some more later if you need to put a second layer on there. Fiberglass is neat to work with. You can make a lot of stuff besides doing repairs with fiberglass.
that should be enough to get started. Now it's time to mix up your rosin. I always use a bigger container than a little one. If you're doing a small job, real small, you could use that little top that comes with it. But I always get a plastic milk jug and cut it to where I can use it. This one's been used several times. Get your rosin and pour maybe a good half inch or three quarters across the bottom of the milk jug. Maybe about three quarters of it with rosin. Now you need to make sure to buy cheap brushes because this brush has to be thrown away because you can't reuse it and clean it up and reuse it. You have to just throw it away. Now the hardener, you should read the instructions what comes with this, but in different areas of parts of the country it, it contains different how much hardener to use. I know if it's during the winter time, you got to use a little few more drops of hardener. During the hot summer time, you use a little bit less. then stir it up real good. So you need to apply it pretty quick because if it decides to want to dry fast, then you know you want it on there and have it all set up. You need to make sure it's mixed good. And three quarter inches of rosin if it's all stirred up. So you want to just take a little time of stirring and pull it away from the corners, pull it toward the middle, just make sure it's stirred up real good. Make sure it's stirred real good. Kind of move it around and stir it, churn it a little bit, just kind of round and round. Make sure it's whoop, kind of whip it a little bit. Wipe your stick off, lay it down out of the way. Get your brush. sure your glasses fit together good if you gotta come up with it. And then just brush it on like you paint. Go down your crack. Dob it up in the crack. Get you a little adhesive coat started there. Like I said, this brush is only good for once, so you need to do all you can. how soon it's going to start hardening so you got to get it on there kind of fast and like I said if you didn't put enough hardener it will eventually harden okay and then start laying your cloth just kind of pat it on there like that and it'll soak in put another one next to it make sure it covers the crack right down the middle Smooth it down later. Try to remember where all your cracks were. But it's hard to see where all the cracks are once you get that rosin on there. It kind of makes it shiny. Kind of push it around the corner there a little bit. 
and then I put a little more rosin on top of it. Like I said, you need to work kind of fast just in case. It wants to harden up too, too soon. It's hard to tell with the way the weather is if there's enough or not enough hardener. You can push it underneath there. Brush it down. Coat of cloth where you know it's really messed up bad. It will get hard. One little piece here left. I'll have to cut some more. Because you need a lot so when you got a big job like this. It's kind of, so you can kind of brush it in there, just like you would paint. You can go around that curve up underneath there, under the bottom. Just keep adding it on there. Get that kitty hair sticking up, just kind of work it down. See, that's flattening out pretty good. Just let it run down in there, it won't hurt it. You gotta smooth this down later anyhow. I'll have to cut some more because I've got some places underneath I've got to do are a little difficult to do upside down, but can be done. And it's going to take a little while to dry. And like I said earlier, if you're where it's cold or a lot of damp moisture, if you're indoors in a little shop, you can always use a heat lamp to dry it off. I mean to, you know, help it dry faster, but don't get it too close. And always check it, put your hand kind of out in front of the heat lamp to see if it's getting too hot, because you don't want to dry it too fast or burn it. You don't want to burn it. But a heat lamp will make it dry faster. But today is kind of a warm day, so I'm not going to use the heat lamp. It's looking pretty good. And it's got to dry. It's going to take a little while to dry. It may take an hour to dry. This brush here has to be thrown away. When you do it again, you have to get another brush. That's why you need to get just some, a bag of small brushes at a discount store or somewhere. Might as well just lay your brush down and let it dry because it's going to get hard. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut my cloth for underneath. We can go ahead and do it, let it be drying as well. We need several strips just like we did earlier. Probably almost as much we got on top that we cut. We'll probably need that much 
underneath. I'm going to cut them three inches long like we did on top. Sometimes it's easier to work with short strips than it is the long ones. But if you got real long cracks, then you could do the long ones and just lay the whole strip, lay the whole strip down there and fiberglass it in. But this is a bunch of little bitty cracks. Okay, I've done mixed me up some more rosin, the same amount that we did on the top. Now to get this underneath, I pretty much going to lay down and paint upside down. We've got all this crack here, so we'll put a little bit on there. Sure is covered good. Okay. Once you've got that pasted on there pretty good, then take your cloth and start working with your cloth on there. Just kind of pat it up to it, bring it around the edge, and it eventually stick in there. Take you another piece, go for another spot. Take you another piece, go for another spot. It eventually stick there. I got a bug stuck in it right there. I have to sand him out of there. It comes time. Make sure it's stuck in there pretty good. Go back and check it, make sure it's still pushed up. This has got to go at it a little bit slower because it is upside down. And if you pile too much on underneath, it will fall. But we do need some rosin on top of this cloth while it's underneath. You could use gloves too, rubber gloves, where this don't get all over your hands. As you notice, I'm not using them. I've always been bad about getting my hands involved in whatever I'm doing. 